So we're going to discuss the differences between pagan Wiccan and witchcraft. Um, pagan Wiccan, pagan and Wiccan are like squares and rectangles. Um, not all pagans are Wiccan, but all Wiccans are pagan. Um, just like all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Um, witchcraft in itself can operate with or without someone being pagan or Wiccan. Pagan or Wiccan is the faith philosophy end of it. Um, whereas witchcraft can have something to do with that, can have nothing to do with that. Um, I personally practice my witchcraft within my faith. Um, but this is in no way meant to be convert to paganism, Wiccan, whatever. Um, this is primarily because people, when I tell them I am pagan and I practice witchcraft, uh, they automatically assume I'm Wiccan or I'm going to curse and hex them because no one believes in magic until you say you're a witch. And then it's, don't curse me. So anyway, so pagan is an umbrella term. Um, Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines pagan as someone who is non-Christian, uh, Jewish, Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim. Um, so any of the normal, the top five, I guess you could say. Um, I believe it primarily says Judeo-Christian, Muslim. Um, but, uh... I suppose you could put Hindu or um, Buddhism in there because they are part of the standard five. Um, so Wiccans are pagans. Um, excuse me. Uh, Druids are pagans. Santerians are pagans. Voodoo, Hoodoo pagan, um, Astaru, pagan, um, so <clears throat> it's anything that pretty much predates, uh, Christianity, Judaism, um, pagan comes from, um, a Latin term, pagani, which means people of the country, so you're going to get a more earth-based philosophy, uh, more earth-based deities, spirits, um, things of that nature. Um, pagans today primarily follow the wheel of the year in some form or fashion. Um, but that's a, another YouTube video, I guess. Um, so... I use the term heathen and pagan interchangeably. Um, there are people who say, no, I'm not pagan, I'm heathen. And those are primarily people who are in the Astaru category, at least from my experience. Um, but heathen is someone who is from the heath, which is um, a shrub-filled wasteland. So, but Merriam-Webster's describes it as, again, someone who is non-Judeo-Christian, Muslim. Um, and again, you could probably throw Hinduism and Buddhist in there. So, now you have Wicca. Wicca is part of paganism. It is the square to the rectangle. Um, <clears throat> it is a nature-based philosophy, nature-based faith. Um, it follows the wheel of the year. You have a a very large 
center around um, a god and a goddess, but you can have one, two, five deities that you work with, spirits, demigods, take your pick. Um, Wicca was brought to light by Gerald Gardner in the 50s. Um, Gerald Gardner is considered the grandfather of modern paganism and Wicca and he basically laid down um, Gardnerianism um, hence Gardner, Gardnerianism you know, there's a thing there um, so and a lot of the Big wig names, the old names, Dorian Valiente, uh, Alistair Crawley, Alex Sanders, um, they're all linked to um, Gerald Gardner. So you have that. Um, Wicca, one of the big things you will hear in Wicca is the Wiccan Read. The Wiccan Read is a very lengthy poem by Dorian Valiente. Um, read it if you have time. Maybe we'll do a YouTube video on it. Um, but you really only need to remember the last two lines. These eight words the read fulfill, and it harm none, do what you will. That is one of the biggest commandments, laws, however you want to put that of <clears throat> Wicca um, and it harkens to the threefold law whatever you put out you get back threefold so if you sit there and you go I don't like that chick's hair so I'm gonna hex her because I can and I'm a witch and I don't wait for karma um, more power to you, whatever you're into, I guess. Um, but Wiccans hold that if you put that out there, you'll get it back threefold. Um, so, hence the harm none. Um, of course, you're going to harm things, so I put it as harm none intentionally. Um, always try to be a good person. But, I digress. Um, <clears throat> witchcraft, though. Witchcraft can operate in tandem or completely separate from the faith base of paganism. I have met atheist witches. They exist. And they're not any less of a witch than I am. Um, so... What is witchcraft? Witchcraft is, first and foremost, it is a form of prayer. Well, not really first and foremost, but for me, because I use witchcraft in tandem with my faith. Um, it is a form of prayer. Um, we use it during... Um, the celebration of the Wheel of the Year, uh, marriage rites, uh, death rites, anything you can possibly imagine. But we also use it as a form of science. Um, I very much like herbs. I consider myself a kitchen witch. Um, and I will sit there and weave spells while I cook. Um... So, you have a sciencey aspect of it because it was science before science was a thing. Um, and you can you can really see that in the megaliths and all sorts of things that the ancients built. I mean, Stonehenge, it's a freaking astrological calendar. You know, it lines up on particular Sabbath days and equinox days and 
the the ancients they mapped the stars they knew the earth was round and it wasn't the center of the universe before the catholic church made it the center of the universe again so the idea that there's nothing to it that's just a bunch of hooey is kind of not correct um i know which herbs not to put in your food and I think that counts for something. But anyway, so if you're going to practice witchcraft, um, as well as paganism, because remember, I use my witchcraft in conjunction with my faith, um, you want to first research. Read, 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 read. And you don't have to read books. Although I suggest you read books because books are awesome. Um, you can get a lot of this stuff on the internet. I know I grew up in the 90s. Um, so when I began my travels down the pagan path, um, the internet was kind of just becoming a thing that was readily available to me. But... I really had no way to figure it out. So I had like Barnes and Noble's and the library. Um, so you can look on the internet, but if you're going to look on the internet, please don't start and end at wiki. Um, anyone, I can go on there and say that Aleister Crowley was Cthulhu in disguise. And that'll be on there. So please cross-reference, fact check your stuff. Um, so I have some books here that um, could help you along your way, uh, be it with witchcraft or paganism or both. Um, most of the things that you will get at Barnes & Noble's um, or the things that you will come up against first is Wicca. And that is in no way a bad place to start. Um, because it makes you really kind of think about what you're doing with Threefold Law and the read. So if you read a book, you know, just cross-reference it because there's stuff in it that might not be true. So the first thing you're probably going to get want to get a hand on um, if you're going to be practicing with a pantheon or what have you, um, especially if you're going to be practicing with a pantheon, but you should know this, is a lore book or a history book. Um, I very much like Scottish lore, Celtic lore, um, Irish lore, so that's, that's me. Um, but you can get Eastern European, Romani, Norse, Czech, Slavic, whatever, Indian, African, whatever your heart's desire. I'm sure there is a book out there. <clears throat> um, but you want to really research your history, research the lore. Um, you don't want to be using, like, Thor's hammer for Yemaya. You don't want to do that. Um, another, <coughs> excuse me, um, another author, or not another author, the first author we are going to discuss, um, because I have him on top, is Scott Cunningham. Scott Cunningham is... His books are very good grab-and-go reference tools. Um, he does write some more traditional, this is how it is, uh, books. I only have one of them, and that's Magical Household, and that was, I think, co-written with another author. I'm not sure of the name. But Scott Cunningham is very, very good for grab-and-go. Um, I have this one, Incense, Oils, and Brews, um, 
It is full of incense, oils, and brews. Um, all the cross-references to the elements. Um, there's crazy encyclopedia in the back. Um, everything um, has a, a, a key. So this is an index for magical goals. Okay. And then you have astral projection, courage, divination, exorcism, uh, happiness. And these are all things that will help with that. And then next to it, like uh, astral projection, the first, or one of them is cinnamon. And it has an H and an O next to it. One stands for herb, one stands for oil. So it'll tell you um, which one it is. Some of them are bouquets, which is a whole bunch of oils put together or scents put together. So he also has a, a crystal book, which I have, and an herb book, which I have as well. Very informed author, also a very sweet gentleman. Um, the second author is considered very fluffy bunny. Um, however, there's nothing wrong with being fluffy bunny. Fluffy bunny is a pagan term or a witchcraft term for a noob. And I'm sorry, we were all noobs. But, um, Silver Raven Wolf to ride a silver broomstick. Again, this is a Wiccan book, but I like it because inside her book, she has homework assignments and it's great. I love it. Let me see if I can find one for you. Um, I really should have bookmarked this, but... And she also has, at the end of her chapters, um, recommended reading lists. So she she basic, she has a lot of stuff all together. And in my opinion, that's really great. Can't find some of the... Hmm. All right, so anyway. So you see, suggested reading for the end of, I don't know, chapter two, getting acquainted. Um, Raymond Buckland, DJ Conway, Stuart Farrar. So, and there, there are homework assignments in here. There's some things that you have to think about, um, which will put me to my last book that I want to talk about that you should invest in. But we won't talk about that right now. So the next set of authors, I guess it's, it's kind of three authors um, in one. This is Janet and Stewart's Farrar, um, The Witch's Bible Complete Handbook. Um, and Janet and Stuart Farrar are two witches from the um, Across the Bond. And unfortunately, um, Stuart has passed on, but Janet is still practicing and she makes treks over here. Um, I've met her on a couple occasions and she's a wonderful woman. She now hangs out with a gentleman called Gavin Bone. And Gavin Bone and her rewrote this book to be more progressive because I believe this book was published in the 60s. Um, but it is still a very good reference tool, a lot of history. I am not even going to play with you. This is very dry reading. Um, it's split into two sections. Section one, or part one, um, is the Wheel of the Year and your basic birth, marriage, death, um, things. It does not talk about gods, but it, for the most part, I think the only real god you're going to get in there is maybe the triple goddess, the holly king and the oak king, and Lou the sun god are really the only gods they touch on just because of how they fall in the wheel of the year. Um, they do, remember, they do come from a Celtic background because that's where they're from. Um, the back 
second portion of um, the book is more advanced. Um, but I have not read the new version, but I know this version is very good. The last author I would like to talk about is Raymond Buckland. Raymond Buckland um, studied, I believe, under Gerald Gardner, and unfortunately he has passed on. But this is Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft, also known as The Big Blue Book. And he, it's a very simple read, um, and it's very nicely written out and laid out. Um, also part workbook. Um, so you can, it does give you spaces to write in and it does give you questions at the end of chapters, which I think is awesome. Um, so those are my authors that I want to talk about and the different books that I want to talk about. But there is one more book that I believe every pagan, witch, or combination of any of those should have and it is called a BOS or a book of shadows. Really it is a notebook or a journal. This is my current one and you just write whatever you want in here. So you have all of your notes and things like that in here. Whatever you want. Spells you know, and you should always keep them going. I mean, I I have like eight Book of Shadows because I just keep going and going and going and going. And unfortunately, I had a point in my life where I threw it all out. Don't ever do that. That was a bad thing. Um, but yeah, so... Those are the things you really should spend your money on if you're going to spend money. Because I know we all just want to spend money um, on things that we enjoy and we're interested in. So if you are going to go out there and spend money, please spend it on books to start. Because um, no one likes an uneducated witch. Um, but yeah. So I hope this was informative and a good place to start. I hope I um, kind of inspired you to maybe go out and pick up a book. But uh, if not, we'll go through some of this stuff in future YouTube videos. So, yeah. Happy witching.